second time I'm, I'm in Algeria. The first time I came here, I actually talked, that was six years ago, I talked about Ghost Group 9. I actually looked at that talk and I was slightly embarrassed about it. But um, when I came six years ago, I talked about Ghost Group 9, I told you two things, which is the color management. Uh, they are trying to do accurate colors and also switch over the font backhand from 3 type 1 to 3 type 2. So actually, I didn't do either of those, but I could talk about 3 type 2 as a developer. So that's one thing you need to know about me. And the second thing you need to know about me from, from GoScript 9 is that I actually made the uh, Windows installer for GoScript 9. Uh, so I would work with, with proprietary technology if I want to, if I have to. Um, so that's all you need to know. Um, um, David Costa is not here. I was uh, hoping to get him to fill in with some of the details between his note negotiation of um, Google and Microsoft to liberate the, um, the Microsoft Font Vela data for, um, for the open source world. They were talking about um, having some of that source code make available to be rewritten into Python to enhance Font 2. Uh, but then I told them, well, you know, uh, C Sharp and Mono uh, actually can deal with, um, deal with .NET executables and actually in the open source world, could you try sort of using Mono C Sharp instead and actually make that code sort of available to the open source world quicker? Uh, I sort of told them that and then they said, sort of say, well, here you are, here's your project now. Um, so, that's the background. Um, now, uh, that is actually the front validator as a tool for testing testing font power to release. Um, it was released, but uh, it was initially developed by Microsoft um, for the QA process. Uh, the last public release was actually in 2003. They have made some internal updates uh, in 2009. Uh, in 2015, uh, in November, it was put onto SourceForge under MIT license, uh, and, well, in GitHub under MIT license. And uh, most of the development is now sort of happening in my fault. So, uh, what does it do? It actually sort of analyzes open type font for. Um, a quality analysis. Um, look at all the tables and perform about 170 tests for the 2003 version. And in the internal version, it actually <coughs> run up to 2009. Um, but when they opened it up, uh, about five of those didn't work because they need, they wanted to keep up some of the technology pipe. Um, the current state as of last month, I added about the support for some of the latest tables and the latest specification. So the, the tables, the number table has gone up and the number of tests has gone up as well. Just when I um, took it up, took up the project, I actually ran the old binary against all the fonts on Windows 8 just to get a feeling of the application. The worst performing, well, the worst form is actually you, uh, which takes about seven hours to run. Um, most of the forms would actually take about under 20 minutes. Uh, some of them actually go, uh, go to eight hours. Now most of the analysis actually is performed on the glyph table and rasterization. I'm going to talk about rasterization a little bit later, um, which is to do a hinting. Uh, it detects about 900 errors among all the tables. Uh, 20 of those is on the glyph data, the actual glyph of, of the form, and 80 of those is on rasterization. Uh, a typical glyph error would be uh, where the contour cup on itself, so that's called a self intersecting contour, and uh, a typical error for rasterization would be rasterization and hinting is a process where they move the contour slightly for a particular um, resolution so that it become it become easier to read. So the the movement, the direction of movement is called the freedom vector, and the and the direction where you calculate how much to move is called the projection vector. 
Now, if those two are perpendicular, that means you're not moving. So that, that means there's something wrong with the rasterization. So that's a typical error you could get for rasterization. Now, anyway, uh, this took some timing. Most of, most of the forms would finish within 20 minutes. Most of the very difficult to analyze forms is actually CJK forms, which goes all the way up to seven hours. It might increase further if we actually do testing on black and white phrase and two uh, rendering and on sub pixel rendering. So it is. Uh, what is it made of is originally written in C sharp and developed on Visual Studio. Uh, what's actually opened um, is actually about 18 months of work at 2,000, well, 200 lines per day. I sort of calculated how much work they actually give out to the open source world um, as an estimate. Uh, there are a couple of non-open, non-portable parts because it actually uses, say, the file dialog of the OS itself rather than using the platform independent implementation. So that needs to, need to be rewritten. So the proprietary parts will, will not release the, the rendering backhand, the XML view, viewer, and also something to do with security, which is checking the digital signature in the form itself. And because Microsoft being Microsoft, um, they didn't, they just supported mainly the true type technology. So they didn't, did not support Adobe Compact Form Format. Um, since I took it up, uh, I have adjusted the build system to build under Mono and with GNU Make, and most of all the non-portable part has been written. The written now is finished. And the, um, the proprietary parts are being gradually replaced. Uh, the renderer is actually being replaced with free type. The XML viewer is, has been rewritten in a platform independent manner, actually hooked into WebKit. Uh, where WebKit is available, and the digital signature has been completely re rewritten uh, to use the Mono security framework. And it also supports Adobe Compact Form format. Now, uh, there are other similar softwares which does similar things. Of course, there's Apple Form Tools, which is tightly integrated with their type surface. Um, there's also the Adobe Font Development Kit and also the Font Tool. Um, a lot of related technologies are the rendering engine and auto hinting and font editors. So now uh, I probably don't want to talk about that that much. Now this is just a screenshot of how that particular Caillou font looked like uh, at different resolutions. You can see that it's actually. Um, not very nice at low resolution, not very visible. Um, further examples. Oh, this is a, well, a sub glyph which is shared between different glyphs. This is actually the word symbol in Chinese. Now, font hinting is actually moving some of the mathematical, using mathematical instructions to change an outline so that it would look better at low resolution. To get best results, you would use hand hinting and embedded bitmaps within the form. Uh, some of it is in the rendering engine, so you get use anti-aliasing and pixel rendering. And now this is actually my name. Uh, it's actually a lot of the strokes. It's already one pixel at 40 grit. Uh, 40 pixel grid. Now the grid test actually tests contours, whether they is misoriented. Contours should actually go around in in clockwise directions, and whether they're intersecting, whether it wraps around itself, duplicated, degenerated, whether points, control points actually over, uh, overlap each other. Compos composite GIF components, uh, uh, also it, it, the, the form test actually test for duplications of all these elements. Uh, it's further screenshots of my name. I like my name of it. <laughs> <laughs> now this is um, an actual hinting. Uh, how does the hinting actually change the outline? So actually a lot of the 
a lot of thin silks get thickened, a lot of the num uh, corners actually get lined up with the grid, and actually some of the uh, features get moved out like that to, to make it more visible. So the rasterization test actually tests for some of the mathematical errors and also the programming construct of how to move the curves around. So I'm just trying to explain why it takes so long for seven hours to analyze the form. <laughs> Uh, and further bitmaps is another thing that is sometimes put into the to a form that make it easier to look at. I'm going to skip over this most of that. Now, look at it. The form validator in action. This is the interface. You open it and then start look at the report options, you could choose where to save the report afterwards. The default is actually to display it on the XML viewer panel, but that actually is not quite working on Linux yet. So uh, most, of, most people should want to save it in a location to view afterwards. Uh, adding forms, you could test multiple forms and add all of them in one go. Uh, select different table for testing, scroll down, uh, the options for rasterization, whether you want to test for all of the black and white rendering, gray, uh, clear scale, or just one of them. Now that's actually one of one result, so you can actually choose to only see information, warnings, or errors. And here's the message scrolling down, so you pass all the tests, there's a warning, there's some information you could see. Um, well, this is a multiple test, so you could test a while and time together. The XML report itself. Now, this is how it looks uh, about a couple of weeks ago on Fedora, so it's the same interface, the same health file. Uh, except the XML viewer is a bit buggy, you don't see any colors or formatting, it's just all the text run into it. Uh, by the way, uh, this is actually done with WebKit C Sharp as well, so it's the bridge between Mono and WebKit which is not working rather than either of those. So just more screenshots. Uh, I actually make it run on Mac OS and bundle enough of Mono together because in the Mac OS world, uh, people tend to can't, don't like installing extra software just for um, just for dependency. So I actually make a bundle for Mac OS users. Uh, come in help files for all your messages. Uh, history timelines. Uh, well, Microsoft actually produced the open type stack and submitted to the ISO committee. So they, so that's the first version of of the form validator that basically coincides with that timeline. And the second update of the ISO specifications coincides with the internal update. Uh, last year there was a massive update of the ISO specification. So that's sort of part of the whole development. Uh, I already told you about most of that, so I don't need to go further. Um, well, a bit of history. I was, I was hoping to get Dave to tell us about the background. Um, they started talking about that on free type and then um, gave me the code uh, after I signed an NDA because Microsoft doesn't want to release something that's too broken. And I got the signed the NDA, uh, got the first code bundle, sort of five days later. I sent it back, make it buildable, uh, three days later, and, and meanwhile working on it continuously so that they could get the view, review going. And three months later, they put it onto GitHub, and I pushed my branch onto GitHub, and the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, now, uh, 
I've mentioned most of my enhancements already. Uh, there's some ongoing Make it run on Macintosh Linux, uh, replace the backend, uh, support Adobe uh, form format, uh, replace the proprietary parts, and support a lot of new tables that's in the latest open types of specification, and uh, also support an upcoming table. So there are some ongoing external work that needs to be done to en enable all that, all that task to keep going. Uh, when I looked at that list, actually most of the new table added was color fonts. So uh, those are color bitmaps, uh, color bitmap something something, uh, color, color palette, SVG, so five of the was five of the six new tables added in the latest specification is actually all to do with colors, bitmaps or scalable vector forms. So these are just screenshots of various examples that I grabbed from the internet of the latest use of it. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the lesson then, because I'm running out of time. Uh, just go to the last thing. Yes, <laughs> that's very important. Um, they um, gave me this idea that I should ask for people, of course, um, supporting my work. So I started asking for people about it. Um, so just a lot of people saying nice things about the project, obviously. So I'm just going to finish the talk with... Uh, that's crazy awesome from David. <laughs> a lot of those. Oh, no, that one. Yes. Well, that's uh, three comments from David. I loved it. Crazy awesome. This is super good. <laughs>